Welcome to the Sarkay's Halacha webinar, Chicken Shaila webinar. I'm pleased that you could join with us this evening. We're here in the Starkey offices in Baltimore with the Yushu Shlita, Shlika, who is well known throughout the world, expert on uh, Shrita and of course many other areas. I'm, I'm Tzvi Goldberg. I'm, uh, I'm proud to be a part of Star K. Um, we do have many programs available for our uh, consumers and Rabonim. We have the Star K hotline at 410-484-4110 or info at star-k.org. We have our uh, monthly webinars the last Wednesday of every month at 12 noon. We're starting a new program, which we're pleased to announce tonight with Rabbi David Heber, a bi-monthly webinar on Hilchus Brachus, uh, uh, eight sessions on Hilchus Brachus, and we'll give you more information about that later. There are many people we have to thank for helping us uh, with tonight's webinar, Rabbi Tzvi Holland and Rabbi Ram Klugman behind the scenes over here. Reb Zev Steen put together many of the videos and the uh, pictures, spent many hours on it for tonight's webinar. Rene Gennat was very helpful. And of course, Dr. Pollack, our president, without whom these such programs would not get off the ground. Uh, if you have some, some problem with your sound on your computer, you can dial in at 218-895-1203. Again, 218-895-1203, and put in the passcode uh, 2020. Uh, the response to our webinar tonight was really incredible. Hundreds of people signed up. And we have Choshev Rabbonim, consumers, and we welcome everyone. We're going to have two parts to this webinar. The first part, we're going to discuss Shilas that are commonplace every day. Uh, which you, you may come across. And in the second part, we're going to get a little more in depth. We have a video of a tour of a, of a slaughterhouse and other questions which are not necessarily coming up every day. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we'll make available to you a, uh, a handout that discusses uh, many of the issues that we're going to cover this evening. So without uh, further ado, we will ask Rav Heinemann to open up the session. Good evening, everyone, and good chaydesh. Tonight, Demir Tzashem, we will discuss some uh, shilas about uh, chickens. By its very essence, some of these things cannot be a psak halacha because it depends on the way it's going to look, how bad it is, how good it is, and some other issues. But at least, hopefully, um, after tonight, you'll have some idea about what is a Shaila and, and what is not a Shaila. And uh, if it's not a Shaila, you don't really have to look at it too much. You only have to look at it and uh, think about it, if it is kosher or not kosher, if it is a Shaila. There, in former times, when you bought a chicken, so the chicken had four parts, two tops and two bottoms. Today, when you buy a chicken from the um, company that produces it, you're not sure that, the, that all four parts are parts of the same chicken. They could be from four different chickens. They process all the chickens, um, and they chop them into four parts, and then they take two tops and two bottoms and put them together. It's not necessarily said that they're the same chicken. And that's very important, because if you have a shot on one part, you have four parts that package together. There's a, you see that there's a problem with one part. It does not necessarily mean that there's going to be a problem with, with the other part. Whereas, if it's a question of trephus, that may be trephus or not, 
if the all four parts belong to the same chicken, then all the all the parts are going to be trafe. If one part of the chicken is trafe, the whole chicken is trafe. If you have a liver that's put in with your chicken, or a stomach that's put in from the chicken, the likelihood that it's from the same chicken is remote. Because all the livers and stomachs are taken out of the chicken before the chicken is kashered. They kasher the chicken without any liver or stomach in it. And, if, and they cash the stomach separately, and then they put a liver or a, a packaged liver or a stomach into the chicken afterwards. And it, it would be very, the chance that it would be from, from the same chicken are very, very small. So that's another thing to remember. If we have a shot in the stomach of the chicken, you can assume that the chicken is kosher. If there's, there's a shot in the chicken, the stomach is probably kosher. The um, chickens. Um, are from the uh, bird family, and birds are only eaten bimasaira. That means that birds can only be eaten if we know that this type of bird is a kosher bird. So even though they may vary one a uh, little from the other, there are different types of geese. We don't eat every type of, of goose. We only eat those on those that we have a tradition on, that these are the ones that we, they used to eat, so we eat them today. So I remember I was once uh, at a, at a, by a shaykhet, a farmer came in and brought in six geese. And so the shaykhet took a look at the geese, he said, these five are shaykh, the sixth one I will not shaykh. Why? This looks a little bit different than the other, the other geese. The, the slant from the beak to its head is different and as far as I, I know, he said, in Europe, we didn't have these kind of geese. We only had to like the five. Well, the farmer swore up and down that they all five geese were from the same mother. Five eggs, uh, six eggs, the, the mother laid, and there were six geese, and they're all from the same mother. But the shakha would not listen. It looks different, and we will not, and we will not shakha it. But the, the red chick, there are different varieties of chickens also. I've seen chickens that have feathers all the way down to the bottom of their feet. You know, the yellow part on the bottom of the, of the chicken, there's a foot and then there's toes. I've seen them with feathers all the way down to their toes. Well, that's different chicken than we have. We wouldn't eat a chicken like that. Um, what does make a difference, does not make a difference. We don't ask these questions. All we know is that we didn't have any tradition on it and therefore we're not using it. Now, the, today when the housewife or the, or the husband, whoever does the shopping, I'm not getting involved with who does the shopping, um, comes home with a chicken, it is usually already kosher slaughtered. So, and not only is it kosher slaughtered, but the insides of the chicken are not there anymore. They've been removed. Um, so if you bought the chicken from a reliable source, which I'm sure that you have, that, um, that has already gone through an inspection, has gone through uh, to the hands of a trained shochet, uh, who has a certificate that he, can, that he knows how to shech and that he does shech, and uh, he's made sure that the shechita was proper, and then the, they defeather it in a kosher way, and um, they open it up and they take the insides out. There are various shilas on the insides of a chicken. Many people may not know this, but a typical chicken has a spleen, it has a gallbladder, it has a heart, it has a liver, it has kidneys, it has lungs, it has, if it's a male, it has testicles, it's a female, it has a womb, it has a stomach, it has a crop, plus other organs that may be inside this, uh, this chicken and they have been inspected to make sure that they are all wholesome as necessary for a kosher chicken. So those shilas... Well, there's a question about turkey. Do we eat turkey? All right, so that's a good question about turkey. The, re re the reason why there's a question about turkey is because the uh, turkey supposedly was discovered in the... Um, New World in the, in the in the Americas, 
and if it was, so they didn't have it before, so how do we eat it? Well, that's a good question. And the other question is, why is it called a Tanagal Hodu? Hodu is um, I, uh, someplace in India, I guess. Uh, so uh, it seems they must have had it somewhere before. I don't know the complete history of this uh, Tanagal Hodu. Maybe they had something very similar in other places. But for some reason, it has been accepted by most Indian that this is something which we do have a, a tradition on. Exactly how we have it, I'm not sure. And, um, and people eat it. As far as I know, people eat it. There are, but some people don't. But most people eat it. Now, there's a... Um, so after the, so these things have been checked already before we get it. So we don't have to usually worry about that. But sometimes you do find uh, that you get a chicken which still has one of the lungs in it. You find a chicken that has uh, one of both of the kidneys in it. You sometimes find uh, a chicken that has uh, the heart in it. And you're wondering to yourself, what are you supposed to do with this? And uh, is the chicken kosher? It is not kosher. Sometimes you find a piece of the f uh, food pipe or the windpipe that's been left in the chicken. And you, and you know what it is. So we will try to um, discuss these things in our discussion, at, uh, some of these things in our discussion time. But the really, the... Uh, the, the most, after this chicken has been kosher slaughtered, been checked to make sure that it's not trafe, it is still not kosher. There's blood in the chicken, and blood is not, we're not to eat blood. So to take care of that, the, our rabbis have told us that we salt the chicken, and we soak it, and we salt it, and when then we wash out the salt, and whatever blood is pulled out, is the is the um, is the blood that we're not allowed to eat? Now there are two veins in a chicken which uh, which have blood in them which will not readily come out with a sorting process. So these veins, which are in the neck of the chicken, either have to be removed or they must be. Um, cut into to to chop them up so that the blood can come out of the places where you've cut them. So, Rebbe, we're going to get to that a little bit later in the presentation. Can we start with the uh, with the broken bones? Okay, so let's okay. let's well, start. Let me, let me show this one here. Let's start with broken bones. So we have here a video of the, on a kind of screen. Okay, so this over here is a broken bone, right? Over here is broken. This is the pulka. Oh, here is the pulka. And it was broken around over here. That's where it was broken. Well, let's go back to that picture. Let's okay. show, we'll show this one more time. Okay, so this over here with the pulka is from here to here. And this is where it was broken. Right over here is the place where it was broken. Now, it's like this. This bone, if it was broken while the chicken was alive... Let me, let me bring it up differently, Rebbe, one second. Hold, hold on, one second. Let me just... Really, I can... Okay, this is picture like that. Okay, so here you see it completely broken, right over here, completely broken. If this happened while the chicken was alive, this chicken would be considered trafe. There are two. There are two issues over here with this part of the bone. There, there are three bones in the leg. One bone is has yellow scales on it, and that's where the toes are attached to that bone. You don't. We don't get those bones. They used to. They used to put them in the soup and um, and eat it. But today it's against the law, so you can't get it anymore. So there's only two bones that we actually get. One, one bone starts over here, which is the pulka bone, and then afterwards there's the thigh bone. So they're attached, they're, they're attached together like this. Now, if this bone is broken, the thigh bone is broken, while, while the ch chicken's alive, it's trafe. 
If this bone is broken, it is machlokas rishonim. I mean, difference of opinion, and therefore, since it's a difference of opinion, it's treif or kosher, we make it treif. Now, there's another issue over here in this in this bone that there. That we can ask the rabbi a question. Why is this bone? Why is this so bloody and red? This this one. Okay, so as I said, the broken bone will only make it not kosher if it happened during the chicken's lifetime. But after its uh, demise, after Shechet um, got hold of it and took care of it, if it broke afterwards, it doesn't matter. Now, why would we assume that it broke before? We assume it broke after. So we take a look at it. If it looks like regular color of a um, chicken, a chicken, a chicken skin, then you assume that it happened after the chicken. Because once the chicken dies, it bleeds very little. It only bleeds while it's alive. So this would be an indication to us that it happened during its lifetime. And that's why the compact, the, the shila is very um, serious over here because it happened during its lifetime. And as we said before, and it is, uh, therefore we would make a trade. For sure, no... Uh, I say it's in my fault, it's a difference of opinion. It's not a difference of, of opinion between one rabbi and the other rabbi. It's a difference of opinion from the rabbi who said 900 years ago. What, what if it had a break like this, Rabbi Heinemann, but it wasn't so red? If it had a break and it was the regular color of a, of a chicken, we would say for sure it happened after it was cooked. There's another way I can tell that it was, if it's on after Shkita or not. If it happens during its lifetime, it starts to knit back the bones. The broken bones start to knit back together immediately. And so the edges of the bones are not that sharp. Unless it happened a second, before, a minute before the Shkita. But if it happened while it was being raised on the farm, it, the ends would, they would not be sharp. This way, they're sharp and it's red. It's a sign. It's a similar move sign to us that it happened while it was alive. And therefore, this part of the chicken is trafe and all the other four parts, plus the neck and everything else that's in it, the stomach, the, um, the liver, and everything else that's edible in there is all trafe. Well, there's a question here from Esther. What happens if you don't notice the break until after it's cooked? How would it look? Okay, so it's not so common that you wouldn't notice it until after it's, it's cooked because usually, as I said, you take a look at this. You can see it's all bloody. There's blood under the skin. And um, so it would be unusual to notice it. But if, you, if, you did know, but if it first looked so it afterwards, it gets brownish afterwards. It sounds like it's brownish even, even, especially on next to the bone. The, uh, it's un unusual that you would notice it. You can see it. Uh, like that. Um, why can't you assume that the show could check this before <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'll, to give you an understanding of that, I'll tell you the following. The show that has about 12 and a half seconds between one street and the other street. Um, he does a tremendous job and he can tell right away if the chicken is dead. He just by feeling it, he feels it's cold. It's not the regular warm, the warm temperature of the chicken, which is about 98 degrees. Uh, he feels that it's like a room temperature. He knows right away it's dead, and they throw it away. But if it's if it has a broken bone or not, that's not always so easy to tell. The shochet really doesn't hold the feet of the chicken. The shochet only holds the head of the chicken. The rest of the chicken is being held by a gun, and he just holds it. He holds the neck and he shechs it. So it's not so easy for him to, work to see this, um, and it can slip past. But everyone's only human being. The uh, even through the best mashgichim, when you're dealing with so many, one after the other, a whole day, that it's um, the shechet doesn't shech the whole day. I mean, he only shechs for about an hour, and then he takes a rest for three quarters of an hour, and then he checks an hour again. But it's impossible to concentrate the whole day, um, one, uh, one hour after the other. But they do, they do a tremendous job. We have here a picture that shows why the, um, 
why the legs might break. Yes, so they hear these chickens have already gone through the plucking machines. They, they, there's enough reason for them to break already long before they get to this part of the, of the uh, passing plant. Because after the shkita, they're, they're put into funnels, and they um, uh, they storm around in those funnels. It's the panic of death, which is on them, even though they already are uh, completely unconscious. But the mere fact that um, it's an automatic reaction, and they bang against the sides of the funnel, they can break the bones over there. Then they go through a plucking machine. The plucking machine. We have we have video of that. We have later. a video that right. we'll see we'll later, later. Where they have rubber fingers that that uh, that rub on these chickens at a high speed and rub the feathers out, so they can break their break the problem over there. Over here, when they hang them, they cut off the feet. The feet are cut off over here, and uh, manually they're put onto these um, this uh, processing line and the. Uh, the workers go and they just throw them onto the line and they can easily, when they bang into the line, they can easily b break something at that point. But it would not be red. It would be the same chicken color as these chickens which you see are. Okay, we do have some questions here, at least, one second. Seem to be having some problems with the sound. Okay, we're very sorry for that. Uh, we're back now with you. Um, let's go back to this question we're dealing with here, Holly. Um, the question is if they found some redness. But it's not that red like not this. Not, red. not so red like this. Okay. Um, it, it depends where where it is and what it is. Whenever there's red over there, which is not supposed to be there, it's a red flag. So we uh, would uh, check into it if there's if it's red. And there is no broken bone. Then it's only a question of blood. It's not a question of being trained. And if the red parts are pieces of blood, so then it has to be removed. The piece of blood has to be removed. If they're just colors, and there's no actual piece of blood, and it cannot be washed off. The colors in themselves uh, don't constitute blood. If there is no actual blood there, and then don't, don't have to worry about it. Is it possible to, for there to be a little, not a lot bloody, from a break after death? It is possible that there could be a small amount of blood from a break after death. Yes, it is possible. Okay. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the, what the Rub mentioned uh, a second ago about the, a, a break lower down in the, in the, in the leg. Okay. So, okay, so these, these are the legs of the chicken over here. These are the legs of the chicken um, before, when the chicken was alive. After the, after the chicken had been defeathered, they are hang from these legs during the defeathering process. The, um, the uh, rubber fingers bang on these chickens over here to bang out the feathers, they don't come out in the sea. It's not like a trafer chicken, which is put into hot water or hot steam and then the feathers just fall out. These have to be pulled out and they're rubbed out. And then after they finish the defeathering process, then the, they, they're cut off right over here. They, both of these feet are cut off. These go in for animal feed or for the garbage. And this is the rest of the foot. Now here there's one bone that goes to here, which is the pulpa bone. And then this is the thigh bone that goes over here to, to, the, to the, the thigh bone, goes over here, and is connected to the pelvic bone, which goes down over here this way, with a ball joint. There's a ball joint right over here that the chicken can move its leg in, in various different ways, not just back and forth, but to the sides and everything else like that. And in a human being, they also have similar ball joints um, for the same purpose. Now over here, this, the, the uh, 
three toes in the front and one toe, this is the toe in the back, and three toes in the front. Now these toes, each one of the, the chicken can move them. How does it move them? It moves them by, there's a string of tendon. I'm going to show you. Okay, okay, let me, can you go back there? Sure. Okay, so there's a, a string over here which is attached to the, this, this mm -hmm. finger, this toe, and it goes through, the string goes through all the way over here till the polka, and in the polka there's a muscle. And this muscle is attached to this string and goes all the way down. And the same thing is true for all of the toes. As a matter of fact, the toes can bend, and if they bend, so then each bend has a string that goes over here. There are 16 muscles over here in, in the polka, which pull 16 uh, strings, which pull these feet, and also pulls it over here. Now, the reason why I'm going into such elaborate discussion about strings is because if any one of those strings are broken on the bottom part of the polka over here, the whole bird is traced. Not only is this side of the bird traced, the other side of the bird is traced, and the top and bottom, everything, it's all traced. The liver, as we, that's the rule. Whenever one part of the animal is traced, the whole thing is traced. It's not true if there's blood in one part. If there's only a problem of blood, you can't get that blood out. You just don't need the part of the blood, and you can eat the rest of it. But when it's straight, the whole thing's straight. Okay. Now, what we're going to show you now in the next picture is that we're going to pull on the strings, on two of these strings that go up this foot and, and come out here on the top. And when I pull it, you'll see that these toes will curl up and, and, and move. Okay. Yeah. from this polka bone all the way down the yellow bone and attaches itself until the, to the toe to which it, it would move. The brain, of course, tells the, it tells the uh, muscle to contract and to move. Okay. Over here is where the strings were, and this is where the toes were. Okay. Um, Okay, now here we cut off the, the, the bottom part of the foot, the yellow part. The part that is still remaining, it's not cut off, is the polka, the end of the polka. And here are all these dots, these holes, through which the, um, the strings went. As I said, there's 16 of them, so sometimes a couple of them go, go through the same hole. There are holes over here, there's holes over there, and there's a couple of holes in the back over here. And if any one of these strings is, is ripped, the whole, the whole chicken is trapped. So going back to the Shiloh, the, when there's a break in the polka over here. Maybe. Yes, so, so getting back over here, that's an important point. So if the, there's a break in the polka over here, we are concerned, besides the fact that there's a, bro a break in the bone, which I said there's a difference of opinion whether that will make a trick or not, but if in the bottom part of the polka, that there's a break, we're afraid that one of these strings have been severed. And if they've been severed, it's going to be trapped. So you know we can go and check them if someone wants to uh, check them out and to make sure that the, none of them have been severed. But we are not considered experts in that today. And um, we don't rely on ourselves when it comes to checking a chicken. If one of these strings have been severed most of the way, but not all the way, it's also not kosher. And uh, it's not so easy to be able to uh, determine that. So whenever anything is severed over there, we make a trace. Now, recently, there has been a whole, um, in, in Eretz Israel, this has been a problem from, for many years, that some of the chickens, uh, now I'm not talking about one chicken, I'm coming a whole flock of chickens, let's say 15,000 at a clip, all of them have some ripped, strings over there, uh, 
ripped tendons, um, they come that way. They came here that way. Maybe they were born that way. We don't know that. But uh, the thinking is that the reason why they are ripped is because to, today, the faster you can get the chicken to the poundage that you want it, uh, the more money you're going to save, the more money you're going to make. The more money you can save on feed, because you don't have to feed it so long. And the more money you'll make, because you can sell it for the same price as the chicken that before you used to feed in eight weeks, which is uh, used to be the typical time to feed a chicken before they send it to the slaughterhouse, uh, from the time it hatched for the egg. So to, if you can feed only in seven weeks or even in six weeks, so then you save yourself two uh, uh, weeks of feed, which is a substantial amount of money, especially when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of chickens. But if they grow too fast, they can take their own weight, and, they, and these tendons snap, and the uh, thinking is that it has to do with that. Anyway, recently in America, this happened that some of the um, chicken raising houses, they um, had this problem. And it was a tremendous problem for all the kosher uh, uh, slaughterhouses because they got um, 20,000 chickens at a clip and none of them were kosher. And they, uh, after they checked it, about 250 of them, none of them were kosher, they realized there must be a problem over here. There's a way how to check it. And whenever, now, since this problem has started in the United States, they check all the chickens, about 120 or 200 first, to make sure that they're okay. And then first they will accept them. So Mati's asking, are the strings for every single chicken checked prior to the salting? Um, so Rahim is saying that they're not, so, so they're they're not checked, unless only a sample is checked. The, these, um, these uh, it usually goes in flocks. Like if they've ma um, made uh, one whole flock too, uh, they may grow too fast. Well, they grow, grow in houses. So you have 15,000, 20,000 in a house. They, they start out as all together, they start out as eggs, as hashed eggs, and then they grow them together. If they're going too fast, it's going to affect all, all of them, or most of them. And sometimes in Etchisro, they used to say it was hereditary. But um, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But if it is, so then it's going to affect all of them. So we don't know exactly, 100% for sure, what the reason is. But whatever the reason is, they check. And if they don't find anything after 120 or 200, wherever they check, then they assume that the whole thing is, has no problems. If they do find it, they don't use them anymore. It just doesn't pay. Because uh, you, out of, out of uh, 100,000, you'll get um, uh, 20,000. So it's, uh, what are you going to do with all the rest of the chickens? So, if, so if, when, again, when the consumer gets it and he finds a break over here at the bottom of the poker, um, so the concern is, Rabbi Heineman is saying, that the, that the strings might have been broken while it was alive. When the consumer gets it, that uh, question has already been decided. The, the, if, if there's a problem with the tumors I get in with these uh, tendons, if there's a problem with it, it's already been decided by the rabbinic staff at the slaughterhouse. So that's not a problem that we have to worry about now. But we do have to worry about if you see the break, the, the, the foot was smashed, mm -hmm. and the bone was smashed, and then we were worried that maybe if it happened during this lifetime, it may have severed one of those strings and made the thing trust. So how can one tell? Or just... You, we, we are not... We're not so talking, there's, there's we don't know how to tell. We, we're not smart enough how to tell, and therefore we have to assume the straight. Last Kishan, the rabbi will have to say straight. He was very smart, and even though he does know, we have a we say we're not machine. That's we're if not. it's broken down at that part. It's broken at that part. He has to say that it's straight. He has to say it's straight. Right. Now that's only true by a chicken, but by a turkey, we are bucky, and we can check them over there in the turkey. So there, there's hope that the, the, the rabbi, if you take it to Shal to rabbi, somehow it got through. And uh, he will check it, and he'll be able to say, look, I checked all the 16 strings, and they're all there, and there's, and there's no problem. Okay. If, it's there, if it's true. And, uh, towards the, the middle of the webinar, we're going to have a, a review of the, um, of the various issues here, so please uh, stick with us. Let's move to another issue of Heinemann, which, um, which we have over here. Um, Okay, so over here, 
this is the the poker bone and this is the thigh bone and it ends up over here here this is the end of the bone it is out of the meat this is the meat and it's stuck through at the end over here this has come out of his ball joint the ball joint was somewhere in over here and it, it came out if it came out during this lifetime and the strings that are supposed to hold it into the ball joint have been um, uh, they're, they're not healthy they're, they're rotten or they're they're weak whatever it is if they they have been consumed through by bacteria other things whatever it may be it is not kosher now um, it's not so easy to tell if the strings have been consumed or not but if you see that at this point right over here that it is all red over here there's blood there and this is sticking out of the place where it's normally in so then you'll have to ask your rabbi what he will look for is that if around here it is it is clean it is um, that there's no uh, blood there'll be a lot of blood if it happened during his lifetime dislocated um, pelvic joint um, if it, there'll be a lot of blood over there and then that's a sign that happened while I was alive and then the whole chicken is not kosher now there is over here on this thigh bone that goes down like this right and this is the this one is the focal bone and this is the thigh bone there is a, a vein or an artery that goes down underneath the, the underneath the thigh bone this is the bar of the chicken over here the, 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 holding, is holding the bar of the chicken and it's under the thigh bone there's a there is a vein or an artery which sometimes plotses <laughs> um, sometimes breaks breaks uh, it breaks apart from the blood pressure um, that it for whatever reason it breaks apart and then you often find blood over here now, if you do find blood over here you have to clean that out before you can eat it because it's blood it doesn't make the whole chicken trace it's just it can't eat the blood once you clean it out you may sometimes have to cut a little bit of it out but um, once you clean it out you can eat the chicken we so have over here. Do not We're confuse that if you find blood in this area, or if you find blood in this area, the two separate areas, in the one adjacent to the other, to make to make sure that the problem extends from the ball joint and not from the underside of the thigh. So the the problem over here, we can. The problem over here then is much more serious. If it's red over here. Yes, if it's red over there and it has come out of the uh, joint, it's trafe. Right. The whole chicken is trafe. Right. Whereas if the blood on the other part, the chicken's not trafe, but you can't eat the blood. We have over here the Hebrew expression here that is uh, written on top. Yes, that's what it's called. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what this is called when this ball joint is yeah, out. The ball joint that's moved from its place. Yeah. is moved from its place. And we have over here a. Uh, right. We have over here a, a, a video <clears throat> to share with you, where we can see Rabbi behind them and forcing forcing out that that ball okay, joint. Okay, if you look look. Um, Sure. Okay, so over here, see that there's the joint. It came out. It was this was the um, drumstick, and over here is the thigh bone. But Rabbi Hyman forced it out. It I forced like it out. It wasn't out. Yeah. So even well, though why is it, why is it blood, why is it all bloody? There's blood over here because that came from that uh, vein, probably. No, I, I probably there probably was a problem up there. You can put it back in again, mm -hmm. um, but it looks like it was bloody. Look at it. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. Let's show that again. So over here is where it's going to come out. Just look over there. It's 
Okay, look, look. Okay, well, we saw it. We'll go to another, another picture. We have some questions here. Let's we'll take some of the questions. Um, okay, after after release, after the salting, is there ever a need uh, for a consumer to do further cleaning out of blood? Yes, it is possible. Um, even though most of the time it won't be necessary, sometimes it could be possible. Sometimes between the layers of meat, especially in the thigh area, on the underside of the thigh that, that I had talked about before, there could be blood there and it's impossible or it's very, uh, very difficult to notice as long as the chicken is whole. You can first notice it when the chicken is cut up into quarters. If you buy a whole chicken, it is, it, you should, if you notice something, you may have to clean away some blood. So Esther is asking if the joint is out and it's bloody, then it's an issue? Yes, that she would have to ask Kishan. Now you can already understand why I say I can't say yes or no. The rub will have to decide whether the blood is coming from the place where the um, where this joint came apart, or so whether it came from a different part of that bone, which is one adjacent to the other. And um, so, so these are the things that you have to decide. You can't wait to tell us by looking at it. Josh is asking, how can one tell the difference between blood and other red colored juices in the chicken? Like for instance, we have some, some picture over here. Um, you can see over here, this juice on the plate, this meat, blood. Okay, so you can see already that that color is, uh, this, this color, it's like a, it's, it's not a, a deep red. It's not a regular color of blood. It looks like it's been mixed with water, um, watered down. And that's not a, a real blood. And you can very often find that when you get meat or chickens from your butcher in a waterproof bag. On the bottom, you see some of this color of water. And that's not an issue. The Mara calls this uh, meat juice. So just like orange juice looks orange, so meat juice looks red. That's besides the blood. That's the juice that comes from the meat itself. And the blood, that's okay. so the blood looks, it looks red, deeper, red, deeper, red, deeper, deeper. Deeper. right? And of course, you wash it off, it could be a little bit thought out, but and, well, if you get it back from a, from a kosher, if you get it from a kosher butcher or from a kosher um, um, source, they already uh, made sure that there should not be any more blood and they've sorted it. And you could, if you don't have any um, red flags around to, to, to think that maybe a problem, you can assume it's okay. Um, follow up on my previous question, Jacob is asking, if I determine that blood must be removed, is washing it sufficient? Does it have to be totally removed? Do I do malicha assaulting a second time? You definitely do not do malicha a second time. Don't salt it a second time. That would make whether, it worse. Whether you can just wash it off, or you may have to use some more um, uh, strenuous types of uh, removal um, by procedures cutting. by cutting it out, that will depend on what happens after you washed it. If you washed it and it looks very really clean, you can, then you consume it's okay. If it still is deep red, then you'll have to cut it out. Now in general, the, if it's reddish in color, the, the, it's not considered blood. It's only if it is a deep red, as especially this um, there is a uh, malmoshes. Actual residue. If there's actual, actual residue of dried blood or of hardened blood, then you really have to um, either wash it out or cut it out. But just red color in itself is not such a problem. Linda's asking, the dislocation of the bone joint doesn't happen after the shkita when they're hanging? Should we always assume that it's tray? No, we that's not, no, not no, necessarily. It will happen after the shkita when it's hanging it will not be red. And it is part, it's, it's quite possible that it could happen. It usually doesn't happen so much because at the time when they hang it after the shkita, the whole chicken is whole. And it usually only happens when you break it into quarters um, or, um, or you um, really manhandle the chicken, it could happen. But uh, you don't have to assume. It doesn't, it's, most of the time it doesn't happen. 
Elishev is asking, again, if an issue renders a chicken trace and it ended up packaged anyhow, so, so someone else got, someone got this chicken, how can I trust even parts of the chicken that seem okay? What if a different part that I'm not seeing rendered a trait? I think what she's asking is, how do I know that all four quarters in my package are kosher if it's possible that someone else got the other part of my chicken? Okay, it's not saying, you know, someone had a, uh, uh, passed away after an operation in the hospital. How can I really go to the hospital and have an operation? You know, maybe I'm going to end up like the other person ended up. So, you know, we, we have a right, the Torah says we have a right to trust these people who say it's kosher. When we see, our, our own eyes tell us that there's a problem over here we should ask. If we don't see anything, we have a right to assume it's kosher. Sometimes in the leg of a chicken, you see a dark vein artery with a lump of dark red liquid in it. Is that the vein the Rav was talking about? Must one remove it? Um, there are two veins. There's one vein that goes down the polka, which very often does have dark juice in it. That's not the one I'm talking about. The one I'm talking about is under the thigh bone that goes from the top of the polka till the, pel till the pelvic bone. It goes across the bottom of the chicken. That is the one which sometimes the, the vein has exploded, has broken uh, from the high pressure that's on it, and the blood has squirted out into the meat. And that's the one where the blood has to be removed. That to the blood has to be removed. Um, Zev is asking, how often has, has any of the problems actually been spotted by any of the consumers watching this webinar? So Louise says daily. She sees it every day. What's the what is your volume's experience? Well, the truth is that it has a lot to do with the processing in the plant. Some plants are more effective in their processing, and some are less effective. But all the kosher plants, the that they are in the United States that that claim to be kosher, they all do a pretty good job. And I would say that 99% of them, or maybe 98% of them, are, don't have any problems. After they've left the plant. Okay, you see, he's asking all four quarters of the package from the same chicken. We'll discuss that, that they're not necessarily from the same chicken. You can assume that they're not. Um, Lynn is asking, what if after a chicken is cooked, you see blood spots or red blotches in a piece of white, white breast, for example? It's very unusual to find red spots after the chicken is, co is cooked. Usually after they're cooked, the blood spots turn brown. Okay. So let's go on to the wings. Let's talk about the wing questions. We have a, okay. uh, we have a uh, video for that. Just give me one second. This is the one. This is at the plane. Right. Okay, so these I chicken. Should, I don't think we should comment now. Is there sound with the video? Okay, so Rob should There's no sound. There's no sound. The only sound is what I'm listening Okay, you can see okay. there, you can see there the, uh, the broken one. Uh, so on. this has gone through the plucking machine. The plucking machine was banged on. The, this one you see over here. Uh, which one is the one? Which picture? This one. This one. I don't, I don't okay, so this over here is the end of the wing. This is the wing tip. This is the one part of the wing, and this is the other part of the wing. Now, a wing has three parts. The part, this part is nearest to the body. It has a single bone in it. The bone is about a half an inch thick. This part of the wing has two bones in it has one uh, that is maybe a quarter of an inch thick, and one is even less than a quarter of an inch thick. The two separate bones, and they connect over, over here somewhere. I have, another, I have another video on that. Let me show, let me show that one. one second. You can see that again. Okay. This has the bones in it. So this is the end. This is usually like one piece, one small piece. There's no, mu not much, there's not much meat, if any, in this part. 
here, this piece, there's the wishbone there, has, uh, this is the thicker bone, this is the thinner bone, they're both connected. This is the bone that is attached to the body of the chicken. Right beyond this bone are the lungs of the chicken, inside the chicken. And it's important to know that because when this bone has been uh, detached from the, from the body, uh, even though it's in, under the skin, but it's been detached, that we award the chicken leg trace. Because when this bone with all the tissue, the tissues that are connected to it, pull themselves away from the body of the chicken, they may have pulled away the, the tissues of the lung, which is right near it. And, made, and if the lung has a hole in it, the, lung, the, the chicken is straight. So we're wired straight. Not only that, but the bone is broken over here within uh, uh, an inch or so from the body is broken. We are concerned that maybe the broken part, if it's a jagged end, it actually um, pierced itself into the body um, cavity and pierced the lung. So we we'll make a trip. If it was broken on this part, let's say it broke over through like this. I can draw it. I can draw it? Yeah. Okay. Press the oh, I'll draw it. Yeah, press, okay. So now, if it was broken over there, there is no trephus on this bone whatsoever. Because even on this bone, it's only trephus because maybe it punched the punch into the, into the lung. This bone, we're not worried it punched into the lung. And there's, it wouldn't make a trephus. So but even though it wouldn't make a trephus, but there's another issue over here that we have to be concerned with. I mean, if you broke what well, it's like, I mean, during its lifetime, it probably will be a lot of blood around over here. You've got to clean out the blood. So maybe you have to cut off a little bit to make sure that there's nothing bloody left over here. But that's not the issue that I'm going to discuss. The issue I'm going to discuss is a different issue. And that is the issue of Avam and Hachan. But this part of it, of the wing, was detached from the chicken during its lifetime. And it was just hanging over there in the skin. And if that happened, so this really was not considered holographically part of the uh, bird anymore. It's been detached from the bird. It's even a chaim. If something comes out from a living thing during its lifetime, even a guy cannot eat it after, even after the chicken's death. So what you do in such a case is that you will um, cut off this, uh, everything, all the meat that's around this uh, Cut. As a matter of fact, cut a bit um, lower to make sure we got everything that at the time that it was broken, that is all off. Throw this part out, and this part over here is still kosher um, because um, it was part of the, of the bird. It's not treif. Now, the Chayavas, the Chachmazan says that the meaning is to throw out this whole part. You don't cut this, and cut this off over here, but you throw this whole thing out. Um, in order that uh, we shouldn't have any shyness with it. Is that, what, which, what is the custom? He said the custom is to throw so, that's, out. so if, if there was a break over here that, where this line is. Right, so, so you throw, throw, out, throw out from, from this joint, from this joint and on. We we'll throw, we'll throw that out. <laughs> now, um, the, uh, by, an, by an animal, it's also similar, but we're, we're dealing with chickens now, so we'll see. <laughs> Okay, so if it's if it's cut over here, broken over here, it, um, then we, then we'd want to cut it here and and throw out this part. That's right. Okay, and if it's broken over here, if it's broken over there. We're sharp object. We're afraid that maybe the sharp point of it pissed along. Uh -huh. But but again, if you buy a package of wings. If you buy them, if they, Separate. If they would, now this all, if it broke while it was alive. If it broke after it was dead, and there's many reasons why it should break after it was dead, because when it goes through those potting machines especially, they beat down on these things, and if it didn't have enough calcium and it had weak bones, it's going to break. And then it doesn't matter. Once it's dead, it cannot become great anymore. If it wasn't so, at the time that it was. So is that a determination that someone could make? What, what, how it's it, same, when, the same determination. You'll see that if it would be during its lifetime, it would be 
um, it would uh, probably start to try to knit together again. It would be bloody around the place where the, where the brain had formed. And um, that's, what, that's the way to tell. And if it looks clean, so then you know what happened after its demise. Okay, are there any questions about the wings? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next uh, issue, which is the, uh, the kidneys. Let me go to that. Okay, now, in order to understand this picture, the um, kidneys are on the bottom of the chicken. The, the bottom has two ends. One end ends up in the pulka, and the other end ends up in the spine. The, right next to the spine, there's an alcove in the bone, in the pelvic bone. And the kidneys are in that alcove. The kidneys uh, maybe are two inches long from top to bottom. And um, over here, the, uh, the, the this is the this is the back of the bottom over here. And the kidneys go from here all the way down into into here behind this fat. These are kidneys. Now over here, you see an alcove. It's not easy to see on this picture, but it's there. It wasn't, it's not here over there. Oh, on this picture, before it's removed, there's something there. It's, it's brown. Over here, it has been removed, and it's moved all the way down to over here. So why are they taking out the kidneys? Okay, so why are we taking out the kidneys? Um, the first thing is, if you take out the kidneys, the chickens will last a few days longer before they get, get bad. The kidneys are the first thing that gets bad in a chicken. But that's not the reason why they take them out. The reason why they take uh, okay, Yes, okay. So over here, we have... Um, okay, so this is the, this is the uh, uh, bottom of the chicken. And this is the um, okay. This this is the kidney, and this is the kidney removed. Okay, why well, I want to remove the kidneys? Not so much because of health reasons. We do it because of cautious reasons. Because this kidney lies in an alcove. This is all an alcove, all the way over here. He goes up a little bit. There's another alcove over here, and the kidney is in. There's two kidneys, one on each side of the chicken. Um, the purpose of the kidney is to filter the blood. So at this point, after Shrita, you don't need it to filter the blood anymore. Now you probably want to get rid of the blood. But the, the reason why I want to get rid of it is because you have to salt every part of this chicken. You have to salt the meat, and you have to salt, salt the stomach of one eater, and whatever else you're going to eat over here with this chicken, you have to salt the bit of blood out. Now, since this is really buried in the, in the bone, if you salt this whole piece of, um, of chicken, even though as far as the chicken goes, you don't have to worry about it because it's only a very small part of the chicken. But when it's with, we're dealing with the kidney itself, the other side of the kidneys, as a matter of fact, three sides of the kidneys have not been salted. And the kidneys are considered like a separate part from the rest of the chicken because they're in a bone. This is a bone over here. And um, it's considered separate. And the, if you want to eat them, they would have to be salted by themselves. They have to take them out and salt them. Now, the kidneys, when they're taken out, they have a consistency that is somewhat similar to liver. And many people have complained to me that they found the liver in the, in the chicken. And what they really found is that it's the kidney. Um, so, Rabbi Heinle, we have a couple of questions. Linda is asking, she one, sees these in the chicken one, all the time. One second. <laughs> one second. So, so that's the problem. Now, it uh, could be that in a bedevic situation, um, it has been salted from one side. Maybe it's good. Maybe some people might consider the 
uh, kidneys as part of the of the, the of all the meats. Are there agencies that allow it to be salted I, I don't with the kidneys know, in there? I don't know if there are agencies that are officially allow it. They um, sellers would like to take them out because the chicken stay fresher longer. But um, they, as far as I know, they all have someone taking them out. Well, these people, a lot of these people are not trained in Harvard to pull out the kidneys. They have a vacuum clean, cleaner and they go into the chicken with the vacuum cleaner and the vacuum and that. And uh, since not all of them are so high college, college trains to do this, so they, some of them mess up on the job. So mm -hmm. they, they only get nine out of, out of 10. That's why you can maybe confine them. They're supposed to be taken out. That, that much I can say. And okay. if you did not find them taken out before you ate your chicken, you should, before you cooked your chicken, you should make sure to take them out before you uh, start uh, preparing your chicken. We have a, uh, a picture of how you would uh, remove the, the uh, kidneys. Let's see if we can bring that up for you. Okay, over here. Okay, so that, that was a video of, of uh, someone removing the kidney. The Rabbi Hyman, they want to get back to some of the other issues over here. Um, if over the course of years one washed the chickens, but it, it is possible that one did not remove pieces of blood or pieces of kidney, does that affect the cautious of one's pots or pans? You have a right to assume that they're kosher. That the, the right kidneys are kosher. You have a right to assume that the pots are kosher. Pots are pots kosher. Are kosher. Okay. okay. So you don't have to worry about that. Not to worry about that. Okay. I would say that one blood is part of the system. Esther is asking if I have seen a broken bottom of the foot that the rug, rug said would not be bloody, do I now have to worry about my utensils and oven? I've seen a broken bottom of the foot that would not be bloody. I mean, she saw one that was bloody? Esther, I'm not sure what you're saying. You saw one that was bloody? Um, I'm not sure of the question. But okay, maybe you should clarify for us. Meanwhile, let's look at some other, uh, this is something that, this is the, the, the I know the gangrene that I okay. wanted to show. Okay, so this is the bottom part of the, of the, the polka. Over here is green. Um, this green is starting from gangrene to set in. This was, you can see the blood over here streak of blood, it has evidently hurt itself. And um, this gangrene in itself is a reason for us to be suspicious that this didn't happen, this happened um, after the slaughter. It, I mean, it, we saw it after the slaughter. It must have happened while I was still alive. It doesn't get, become gangrene in, this, in, uh, in one minute. So it probably was there already for uh, a week before. So this chicken developed gangrene while it was alive. And since the gangrene over here gnawed away at the um, place where these um, tendons are all collected together, we do have to uh, be worried that maybe some of these tendons, one or more, have been severed or have been weakened, but they're not usable anymore. So this chicken would be considered a tray. But this is tray, and the whole chicken uh, is all tray because it's all part of the same chicken. 
Okay, I want to just take a break for a minute and uh, thank everyone for joining us. We're not finished yet. We still have some more to discuss. Uh, we're here at the Star K offices in Baltimore discussing with Rav Moshe Heinemann, Chicken Shilas, and um, we do have a, a summary at this point of things that we discussed. And uh, the technicians are telling me if this uh, if this does uh, go go uh, properly. Uh, let's try to see what this. Up the halachas we have learned. Do they hear that? In the drumstick, if the bottom half of the bone is broken, and there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, the chicken is not kosher. If the top half of the bone is broken, and there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, it is possibly not kosher and should not be used. A rub should always be consulted to make these determinations, and one should speak to their rub if the chicken was accidentally used. The thigh. If the bone is broken, and there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, the chicken is not kosher. If the thigh bone was dislocated from the pelvic bone, and there is reason to believe the dislocation occurred while the chicken was alive, the chicken is not kosher. If a kidney, or part of a kidney, is found in the chicken, it should be removed before the chicken is cooked. If it was not removed, the chicken is still kosher. Blood. Blood must always be removed and may not be eaten. The wing. A break in the outer two sets of bones does not make the chicken treif. However, if there is reason to believe that the break occurred while the chicken was alive, the wing must be cut at the break and that piece must be discarded. If the inner bone is broken and there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, a rub should be consulted. If the inner bone was dislocated from the chicken's body, and there is reason to believe the dislocation occurred while the chicken was alive, the chicken is not kosher. Blood must always be removed and may not be eaten. Sometimes it is impractical to remove the blood from the wing, in which case one should remove those parts of the wing that are bloody. In a package of pre-cut chicken, each piece is judged independently. If one piece is not kosher, the others still may be used. When one brings a chicken to their rov for a shayla, they should not cut the piece or remove the skin. It should be brought as it was found, as this may affect the outcome of the shayla. Okay, that is um, a summary of the, uh, the, what the issues that have been discussed. Of course, if you have any further follow-up questions, you're welcome to get in touch with the Star K, info at star-a.org. We do hope to have this video up on our website, this uh, webinar up on our website. Um, and uh, in case you missed parts of it, uh, we hope to have it there for you. Um, at, 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 the, yeah, at the end, yeah. Um, we have now a video of um, of a slaughterhouse and so we have a little warning it gets a little bit uh, maybe gory for some people if they're sensitive to that uh, let's see if we can if we can bring that up for you i think most people have not been inside a a uh, chicken slaughterhouse so they should find this interesting Do you, do you hear some noise? Is there any noise? Okay, so the, the, the Ramadan, you could explain what's, okay, what's going on. Okay, these are turkeys that are going through the slaughter. So you see the sheet takes one split second. So they go, this is, this is, this is the, sh the shochet is checking to make sure that they've done been all being cut properly. Who would do it? fact, that, that, that's myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was checking it. I'm checking on the shochet to make sure they did. Now, the, they go to, into a machine which plucks the feathers. 
So before they do that, they usually go to cold water, which solidifies the fat under the skin, so that when it goes through these machines that, that rub out the feathers, that the skin does not break. So now it comes out of the cold water. It's, a, it's cold water, 34 degrees. And now it's gonna go into these plucking machines. So they go in and the plucking machines rotate, their rubber fingers and they rotate and they rub out the feathers. So you can definitely see how, how their handles, they, yeah, so you see, you can see how they get breaks banged, could they happen. Get, they get banged around over there in that machine. They're coming out of one machine and pretty naked that um, most of the feathers are off. It's only a few feathers still on as it came out of this machine. Now it goes, then it goes to another machine. It's going to this machine, to another machine, and finally- You can really see how they get, they yeah. get uh, pushed around. Right now, they look uh, pretty clean. So, so over here, they cut off the feet. They have the feet that they cut off. And when they cut off the feet, they hang by the feet. So when they cut off the feet, they drop down onto a belt, onto this belt, they're coming up the belt. And then they get put on to the, they get put on. Now these over here are chickens. These are not turkeys anymore. We're, we're dealing with chickens. They, the workers put them on the lines. So sometimes they bang them on the line. They bang them on the line and they can break bones at that point also. Now they're going over this machine, which actually cuts off the heads if there's any heads left or anything that sticks out of them is not supposed to stick out, gets cut off anyway. <coughs> They go through various machines, just turning around the machine. Um, the machine uh, opens up the insides, takes out at, the, at this point. Um, it's, a, it's a machine that's moving it. It takes out the, the food pipe and the wind pipe from the inside. The, and then they're going to open the machine's going to open on the top. We go through the inspectors to make sure that it's healthy, healthy chicken. And then it goes uh, past the mashkiach, this is mashkiach, who's checking it to make sure that there are no um, um, openings in the, in the intestines and other shards that they have. These are all livers that have been taken out. They te they're taken out now, right over in the these are all rivers. Not to crush it. These are stomachs. The stomach of a chicken, they have a red, um, there's, it's yellow on the inside and brown on the outside. Now they're coming and they're being capitulated into the water where it stays for a half hour, it soaks for a half hour, and it's moving. It's moving very slowly and it moves from one end of the bat to the other end of the bat, which is maybe um, 70 feet long. And then they come out at the end after a half hour automatically. That's all ordinary. This is they're being sprayed with salt. They put them on these poles to stand them up so they get salt to go over. And then after they go past this spray of salt, they go into a machine that turns them over with salt to uh, that turns them over with salt so they all get salted. And then they get put onto this conveyor belt, which goes up, it's not a hill, it goes up. And so that the cavity under the chicken is facing down, so if anything comes out of it um, with, through the salt, it will be pulled down and uh, washed away. This over here is um, after the salting process, they get washed off and they come out of the, the wash 
Let me go. Let me just move the process. Again, we can see very well how the legs might get broken over here. Any of the legs that were so here, the, this machine cuts it up into uh, different parts. Not if they want to sell for parts, they want to sell whole, then sell them whole also. This whole part of the factory is all for packaging chickens in different ways. So we can see how there's no connection between one, right? They just take out the whole pile, right? So there's no connection between one part of the chicken and the other in the package, right? Random. All right, David has a question here. Um, are they cut open before salting? Are they, are they salted in the factory for a full hour? They are salted in the factory for a full hour. They are not, they are opened, they are whole in the, in the understanding that the whole chicken is all attached to itself. They're not split into halves. They are whole, they are sorted on the inside and they're sorted on the outside in a very meticulous way. I think the answer to this question that they cut open before salting is they're not, not. They're not cut open, right? So but they, the top and the bottom are cut open, the side not cut open. Yeah. Uh, Mati's saying, it seems much more complicated than my local kosher slaughterhouse, but I know it is the exact same process. Your machines are just bigger and trash and more chickens. It's amazing how big a process it is. Um, why do some people prefer split chickens cut like a butterfly? Is it because it gives more of the open areas of the chicken in order to have more of a chance to get salt in all places? The reason why it's done is in order to get, make sure that the salt goes to all the places. It's, more, it's easier to deal with an open chicken that's open like a butterfly than one that's closed because you have to go inside and you've got to make sure that every fold has uh, salt on it. Well, these new these machines that they have in in the plants of today, they are all set up for that to make sure that salt gets to every part of the chicken, inside and out, under the wing, between the the, the thigh and the body of the chicken, and every other place. They go through various machines to make sure that it happens and they stay in the salt for a complete hour and more. So Rahan was saying that the way that the machines work now, there is no real advantage to splitting it. Is that what I understand? So those who split it, split it because um, it's, it used to be much more difficult to do than it is today. Yeah. Those who want to do it because they have that custom to do it, so that's fine. But it's the, the real necessity for, to do it today is not like it used to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, we wanted to go on to some more questions that you may not see in your, in your, uh, your chicken that you buy at home, but uh, these are issues which are, as we discussed before, a second level of, of questions. So here's a video of Trey bringing the neck. Let's watch this and ask her behind him to comment on it. Okay, so this is the, the neck. Now the neck has two veins running through it, which should be either removed or cut before the, um, the salting. Okay, so we're digging down to get them. Here they are. The two veins, and they go all the way through the neck. See, they're now spread into two. It looks like one, but now they came two. And they and pull them out. So who cuts that? So either they pull them out. See, this coming out, they're coming out all the way till the end. And they go all the way till the place of the shkita, where the shkita was originally. That's, that's over there. That's where they came out. Or the if it's um, if it's not done that way you can cut them cut the slices in the neck like this and it'll be, they'll be cut and then if there's any blood in them they will automatically drain out um, and this is also an acceptable way 
of Kasher and the chicken. Now somebody had the custom to do it one way, somebody got the custom to do it the other way. Uh, but really, you only have to cut it once. They cut it three times, which in most places, uh, to make sure that they've cut it at least once. So th this is not something that uh, you would check uh, in yeah, your home? This is something you could check in your home. When you get the chicken in your home, you can check and see if that vein is still in it. Or if it's cut. Or if it's been cut. Yes. Is something a person needs to check? No, you're not no. check. You can just assume that yes. it's been done. And if for some reason it wasn't done, the chicken still kosher, as long as the head was off at the time they salted it, which I guarantee you was off. So, Elisha was asking, it seemed to move very quickly. How can the mashkiach check well enough if he has just a couple seconds okay. for each chicken? <coughs> the line is a little bit misleading. So, like in one chicken plant that I was at recently, so the line goes at a, at a steady clip. But automatically, the chickens are divided into five groups. Because every fifth chicken comes forward in front of the shaifet, the other bite it, and four go, uh, go behind, behind. So uh, one of those the next one. one of those so he only gets every fifth chicken. So it looks like it's going five times as fast as it really is. It is, it is fast. I mean, you've got to get used to it. But once you get used to it, it's not as bad as it was. OK. Um, will you be discussing bruises on chickens and problem colors later? Uh, we did discuss many of those issues already, no? Okay, as I said before, if the a, a bruise in itself, just a discoloration is not a, it's not an issue. The only time it's an issue is if there are pieces of blood that's coagulated in this bruise, then you should cut it off um, before you cook it because it is it, it is a problem. If the piece of blood, they will look dark brown, maybe blackish. They will not be the regular um, um, brown and fine numbers. It will look blackish. You can cut it off, um, and the rest of the chicken will still be fresh. Well, if many times the consumer finds pink, you see pink, a pink color, especially by the legs. OK, the only place where you really find a pink color is sometimes you may see it in the inside of the chicken, in the, where the ribs are. There's ribs in the top part of the, of the chicken, and in those ribs, um, there's hidden the lungs. The lungs are pinkish. Um, that's the only real pink thing to find. If there's like a lighter uh, blood color, which come, which you will see after it's salted, we already discussed that, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Um, let's go back to our. Uh, our uh, PDF over here. Okay, these are the, these are the uh, the neck veins that the mom discussed. Okay, over here, this is the. Um, this over here is the liver. There are two lobes of the liver. Is one lobe, and this is the other lobe. They look identical. Between these lobes, the gallbladder has been removed. If the chicken did not have a gallbladder, the chicken is straight. There's, uh, if you have a question, when well, you get it, when you get the, the liver, you don't have to worry they didn't have a gallbladder. They took it out. But if you shut the chicken yourself and you opened up, you didn't find a gallbladder, so you got problems. What is typically done is that the shaykhid or whoever's in charge of the pashas will lick the liver right over here between the two lobes. That's where the gallbladder sits. If it tastes bitter, it's good. It's a sign that they have a gallbladder. It's called a gallbladder um, because it tastes bitter like gall. And the, um, the, because of its taste, it's a bit it had one. Very often you can see a green shadow over here down the side of the of the uh, liver. The, the green has come off from the gallbladder, which is green. Um, if it tastes bitter, it's good. If it tastes good, it's no good. It's bitter. <laughs> so it's got means and stripes. So when the consumer gets this uh, liver, it's not it's not uh, kosher. It's not kosher. They, as far as I know. None of the chicken passing places 
kasha of the river by themselves, so they may even make a dish out of them or something like that. But it's not part of the regular raw chicken deal. They what they will do is that they will um, seal it in a plastic envelope, and sometimes they will put it in with the chicken. You have to make sure to take it out <coughs> before you cook your uh, roasted chicken because this is a nothing kasha. And and the process of of kashering? The process of kashering um, is that you wash it off, you put it on a um, a grate, and you um, put a little bit of salt on it for taste. The salt is for kashas, but the amount of salt you have to put in the microphone for taste, and you broil it on both sides, and you wash it off after it's been broiled, and then you could use it. I'll do it to boil. It has to be broiled, that it should be, um, don't change color. It starts out as dark brown, it becomes um, pinkish, then it becomes light brown, and then it becomes a murky shade of brown. And that's the sign that it's finished. Does it have to smoke? It does not have to smoke. Now over here, this is the, uh, it looks like the, um, the spleen. The spleen on a um, chicken is like a round berry, a dark um, red berry. This looks like the heart. The heart of a chicken um, is not the same as the heart of an animal or a heart of a human being. It doesn't look like a heart shaped. It is like cylindrical shaped and comes to uh, one end comes to somewhat of a, of a point. Now you might find this in your chicken, stuff on your chicken. So if you have it, just throw it away. It is not a cancer or anything like that. Um, we have some questions here. How can he how can he uh, lick it if there's a possibility that, that it's straight? Oh, licking the litter. That's a good question. Um, the the answer to that is he licks it. If it's if it tastes bitter, so he did nothing wrong. If it didn't taste bitter, he spits it out. He doesn't swallow it. So he's allowed to do that since he to just tasting it is only forbidden um, by the chachamim because it is uh, not eating it, you're going to spit it out. But to taste it, and since there's, there's uh, we don't know if it's kosher treif, so it's a suffix, Dravon on Now over here, you want to go back for one second? This one? Yeah. Okay, over here, these pretty things over here are intestines. And there are in a chicken. The, uh, <coughs> the people who check the chickens for the pastures look over these intestines to make sure they don't have any chicken pox, because that's very common. And uh, that's one of the most common things you can find on a chicken. I would think that maybe only uh, 1%, or so maybe top 2% would have it. But the, um, they check them, and the easiest way to check them is you run your fingers. <clears throat> over the outside of these intestines, if you feel bumps, you know that's chicken box. Now maybe it will, it will show. Okay, well go to the next one. Go to the next one. Okay, so this is the bottom of the chicken. These are the two legs, two feet, and this is the liver inside the chicken and this over here behind it is the stomach of the chicken it is a hard uh, it's called pit, a puppet which is the stomach of the chicken the food goes in there goes through the intestines um, until it finally comes out Okay, mm -hmm. do I speak? Yeah. Okay, so over here, this is an intestine. Now over here, on the outside of the intestine, there's a protrusion. There's something over here that doesn't look so kosher. So the way to test it is you, you press it and see if that end piece will come out. If it will come out, um, let's watch it now. See, it came out. Whatever was in there came out. Now this point, 
The question is, do we have a hole in the intestine or not? Uh, we actually do have a hole in the intestine, and therefore it will not be kosher. So this is something that the Mashkiach does? Yes, in, this Mashkiach does over there. The matter of fact, he doesn't have any time to do it. Mm -hmm. Whenever he has a shana like that, he puts it on the side, and there's a special uh, other rabbi who comes and checks all the shilas at his uh, leisure. He's not, not no pressure in order to find out whether it was actually kosher or not. Okay, just to end off, uh, we have a couple of pictures over here. This is from behind him in, checking uh, his knife. I'm uh, checking a knife over here. Um, and uh, another picture of Rabbi Kurtzel running his finger along the knife to make sure that it's on the blade, to make sure there's no sure. nicks in the blade. That's crucial, that there should not be any nicks in the blade. Over here it is. Uh, you can see the, uh, the, the, the salt. salt. And again, you can see. The, this machine is throwing salt on them. It's, it's like a tumble machine. It tumbles the chicken around and around. First, they have the salt go on the inside of the chicken, and then the tumbler tumbles the uh, uh, salt on the outside of the chicken. Okay, Reverend thank you very much. We'll, uh, it's been uh, quite an hour and a half. I want to thank Rabbi Heinemann for, uh, for giving that presentation. Uh, I want to re remind everyone that we do have a new webinar that we're going to be advertising with Rabbi David Heber on Nicholas Brochus, uh, bi-monthly sessions for eight sessions um, at noon Eastern. And we'll, uh, we'll email you. Anybody signed up will get an email about that, uh, about that session. We do have also our monthly webinars at uh, 12 noon, the last Wednesday of every month. And uh, as uh, Starkey Tech says, um, you can call us at 410-484-4110 or email us or go on our website, star-k.org. Uh, we apologize at the beginning. We seem to have some, some, uh, some sound problems, but we hope that they, were, that they were solved and that you were able to hear the bulk of the presentation. We're going to do our best to put up on our website a, uh, a presentation that is complete and whole. So if you missed any part of it, uh, you you can catch it there. Um, does the world want to? Uh, I just want to. Parting words. I want to wish everyone a good evening, good night, and the hope that um, we learned something tonight. I want to wish everyone a good chodesh and eventually a good chan. We do have one uh, article that we want to give out. Um, let me let me do that over here. Okay, so you should see. Let me see how I do this. Okay, you should see on your screen a a PDF that should allow you to download that that uh, that PDF, which is more or less a, a, a similar discussion to the issues that we had tonight about shilas of blood and broken bones and wings and, and uh, uh, buka de atmas and thigh bones, and you should see it all in there. And we hope that you enjoy it. It's not something that we have published. You're the first people who are getting a hold of it. So we hope that you do, uh, you do enjoy it. He wants to know to whom would we bring chicken shilas? Okay. Uh, you can bring them. You can you can bring them to the Star K. Rabbi Holland says you can even ship them to us. One twenty two Slate. They're one twenty two Slate Avenue. Take them to the. And uh, Rabbi Holland says you should bring them to Europe. And uh, and 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 if and if he has the shayla, he can certainly send send you to uh, to wherever he pleases to the Star K. Um, and uh, we hope that it's been informative and help you be able to be a more educated, uh, an educated kosher consumer. Thank you very much. Take care.